Three, two, one, you are live. Hey, welcome painters to the patio in Colorado for another Learning Plan Air Live on the patio. We're here to, to help you get motivated, inspired, educated with plain air landscape oil painting. And so we're here every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Welcome. If you're in the chat, just say a quick hello and let me know you're with us. And at the end, stay tuned because we have a live Q&A. Well, we'll try to help each other with some questions uh, that kind of present some common obstacles with plain air landscape oil painting. And so here is the uh, here's the painting we did last week. If you were with us or watched on replay, and we were talking about how to, I don't know if you can see that the sun and whatnot, but how to add depth to your landscape oil paintings, and that's too much in the light. And uh, we talked about you know asking yourself about color, value, and and temperature. So do I need to make it warmer or cooler, lighter or darker as you move around and block in your painting? And we can see that this apple, the light on the apple, is one of the warmer places in the painting and of course the cherries the planter pot was was one of the cooler places in the painting so if you're aware of that as a as a, a landscape oil painter you look out at the river the mountains whatever you're painting it's really going to help you dial in your colors and values a lot more accurately and uh, you'll be able to make some beautiful paintings uh, all right hope you can see everything i'm just going to check and make sure it looks like we can see the still life it looks like we can see the i've got my painting turned a little bit so it's not directly in sunlight but I uh, also wanted to, uh, to just kind of uh, say today, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to talk about contrast, one of the most important things about plein air landscape painting and how to create it and how that adds interest uh, and emotion to your painting and uh, helps you make a beautiful painting. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Stay tuned for a, a live q at the end. And again, if you're watching our replay, feel free to skip around. And we have other videos here on plein air landscape oil painting that I think will be helpful for you. And if we're just meeting, hey, my name's Terry, and obviously my passion is plein air landscape oil painting here to, to help us all get better and to get started. If you haven't get, gotten started yet and you've thought about it, you don't know what you're missing. It's an amazing sport, amazing activity. It just brings a lot of peace and joy into my life, and uh, it's something you can do by yourself, solo, something you can do with people, spread out safely, out in the open. So, uh, all right, well, if you're in the chat, just say a quick hello and uh, let us know if you're with us and uh, otherwise we'll just get we'll get started and before we do uh i just want to let you know this live stream is brought to you by my free private unlisted youtube video called complete guide to plain air setup and supplies if you haven't seen that one yet click the link in the description i think it'll really help you get going maybe some things you haven't thought about uh when you're gathering up all your supplies and getting started with plain air landscape oil painting all right so uh here's our quote of the day uh mindset for me is really important you know uh, you know, spiritually, physically, um, I like to try to stay as positive as I can. And so uh, here's our here's our quote for today. It's uh, the secret to radiant light is contrast of cool and warm colors coming together. Colors should ring like a bell. And that's from Sergei Bongart. Uh, I was trained in Russian Impressionism. He is one of the fathers of Russian Impressionism. And that quote directly relates to what we're going to talk about today. We're going to try to make our colors ring like a bell. So I have started this and... Uh, you know, every Friday, I'm not really sure how much to, to get started. I started this yesterday. The lighting is always different, you know, but we do have light and shadow today, and it will be a good time to talk about contrast. So uh, so let's just go ahead and do that, and um, we'll get started here. But, you know, why are we painting fruit on the patio if I'm a plein air landscape oil painter? Well, as I've said before, um, you know, if you can paint a grapefruit, you can paint a tree. If you can paint a cantaloupe, you can paint the river or the mountain. And so... We are here every Friday to, to focus on tips and techniques um, and, and help us focus on pieces and color and value and temperature and tactics like that that we can practice here in a kind of a stable, safe environment uh, so that when we head out and, you know, down to the river, we'll, have, we'll be better equipped to make some beautiful paintings. So that's why we're doing that. But, uh, you know, uh, let's get started. OK, I pre-mixed up some colors and I think we'll just work on, you know, maybe we'll just go with the orange and maybe it'll work around the canvas a little bit and talk about contrast. All right. So I hope you're having a good week. Hope you're painting this weekend. And uh, if you're not, I hope you're watching some paintings on YouTube. So let's get started and go with the, the shadow color right here of this, of this orange and all of this mess right here. That's not painted. You can see that's my drawing. So I have various, I have a, various stages of painting that I do. So let's just go ahead and put this, uh, this shadow color in on the orange. I'm just using a, a big number 12 brush filbert. And I've got a mixture of some orange, a little bit of green, um, just, just something to maybe a little bit of red, cad red in there. 
just to kind of describe this shadow on the orange, which is it's dark, but what I'm doing is I'm comparing it to the shadow on the grapefruit. Okay. And, uh, that's a tough one to sort out. I mean, today it looks not as dark as the grapefruit, but I'm just staying kind of on this side of the orange because the light is coming from here. And so this is my shadow portion of, of this right here. And so let's talk about contrast and, uh, you know, contrast, contrast creates interest. So when you look at a, a beautiful painting that you like, or someone loves your painting, you know, these great artists, they, they strategically use contrast in the painting. So there was a, a high chance that, that that artist purposefully used contrast in their painting, whether it was at the focal point or wherever, to create that interesting painting. And it's really my two favorite ways of doing that are to, um, to put a warm next to a cool and a light next to a dark. Um, so just, just think about that, because when you're out there painting outside, uh, you want to think about ways you can do that in your painting because that will really make your painting interesting if you can accomplish that and that's the challenge we all have every time we paint i'm going to work on the shadow here with the orange it's a little bit of a violet color um it's it's got some i've got some ultramarine blue in here probably make that a little darker actually it's got some ultramarine blue a little cad red you can use that shadow piece to carve out the shape of the orange you know don't just make your orange like a round circle orange especially that that uh, grapefruit you know how they kind of look like a flat tire you want to try to capture the shapes of the fruit you know accurately and look at the angles that they're coming out at so that cast shadow is what that is right there cast shadow onto the orange and uh we'll just leave that there now this cast shadow is different so i always compare uh part of my tactic is to is to always constantly compare pieces and values and temperature so that's kind of what i'm doing um, and again, if you're in the chat, I'm just having a hard time seeing it because of the sun, but just say a hello if you're in there. Let me just look up here and just see. Hold on here one second. Didn't mean to put my ugly mug in front of you, but uh, let's go with. Okay, there we go. Hey, Dan, you're with us. Good morning. Good to have you, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to comment, question, whatever you want to do, Dan. But we're just working on, if you're just joining us, we're just working on contrast. And so this shadow is darker than that shadow. So I just put a little more ultramarine blue in it. A little more red and again i can use that shadow to carve out the angles of the watermelon or sorry the uh, cantaloupe watermelon we did paint watermelon a couple weeks ago but um but uh here we go that's that shadow piece right there from the sun we'll just use that to kind of carve out that shape of the uh of the cantaloupe like that just kind of briefly sketch it in but can you see it's hard to see on the camera i know but there, this is more vibrant than that shadow and uh we'll just just briefly put in this shadow right here so i always want to compare my shadows you know to one another and that's how i do it but with back to contrast you know like i said my two favorite ways are contrast of of color and contrast of temperature so for me in this painting what's really really interesting is you've got the shadow side of the grapefruit right here and then you've got light hitting the orange so let's let's go ahead and do that right now and you'll see how this part of the painting will kind of come alive and that's what i want to really try to teach and focus on today how to how to think about that and accomplish it when you're looking at a tree a mountain or whatever so hey dan what are you painting this week man <laughs> let us know in the chat what are you working on uh, okay let's go ahead and put this uh put this light right here on the orange and I mixed up some cat orange, some cat yellow, just all my bright, vibrant colors because I'm getting full on. I'm going to use a different brush, clean brush. Clean brush, clean color. Here we go. Just thick paint. I really just put it on very, very thickly. I could use medium or not. I use liquid impasto medium. It's a uh, kind of a non-toxic. But here's what I'm talking about. Contrast of light and shadow next to each other. And you'll just, you'll just kind of see the power of, of what that can do when that comes on like that. And I've said before, and I'll keep saying it again, the shadows do all the work and the light gets the credit, you know? And so I could even go, I could even go a little more cat orange in there, but like I've always said in previous videos, and I'll keep repeating it because it's so important. There's, there's various elements of light and shadow to a shape, whether it's an orange or a tree, you've got the light, 
you've got the half tone in the middle, and then you've got the shadow. And so you want to be able to show light turning on an object that helps you create depth and an atmosphere and more, more realistic shapes and colors. But I'm going to pop a little more, yeah, a little more cat orange, just pure cat orange, like right there. I don't know. You tell me if you can see what you see, but what I really love is the light next to the dark, the warm next to the cool. And then here we have light coming on the tablecloth next to the cool shadows in the background. So I'm aware of all this, you know, as I paint and, uh, Let's just put on the halftone real quick because it's the actual color of the orange without the shadow hitting it or the light hitting it. And uh, and that's what we're kind of working on here. So I'll make it a little more yellowish and a little more orangish, like like right there. That's the halftone color right there. You want to always include that. And, uh, you know, toward the end when you want to get fancy, you save your highlights and your accents, your darkest dark and your lightest light for the very end of the painting. We're not there yet. But I'm just going to show you like on this orange. We just kind of put the navel, you know, the navel right there. You work big pieces to small pieces, you know, and that would be something we would do toward the end of the painting right there. So um, let's keep trucking here. I'm going to fill in this part of the planter pot and again, talk about contrast. OK, so if you're joining us, welcome and uh, feel free to leave a comment. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you're struggling with. Let me know if I can do any videos for you on specific things. We're going to go out. Oh, hopefully next week and do another video, a uh, long form video on uh, greens, you know, how to differentiate your greens and nail your green colors because we got a few more weeks left this summer here. It's You can feel fall in the air. Can't wait for fall to get here so I can paint those aspen color trees. But uh, in the meantime, we need to kind of improve our greens, I think, and our, our ability to, to nail our greens. But uh, let's just get this part of the planter. I've got some alizarin crimson, cerulean blue mixed up. I'll dip into my medium and I'm just going to, I'm just going to follow my, you know, my outline and my drawing and stay within the shape, you know, right here and just kind of keep it loose, but just get it blocked in, you know, so I'm still, I'm just in the block in phase and it's one of my darkest darks right here, you know, it's very dark. So we just do that and, and you can kind of see how that comes together and we can work within that piece and do some other things, put some reflected light in there, just a little bit of alizarin crimson that I just put there on the edge, but uh, we'll stop right there and then maybe fill in the cantaloupe piece and just try to work our way around. But here's point number two with contrast, okay, is that, um, you know, contrast creates emotion in a painting. You may have heard me talk about that and kind of think, well, what's your, what's your problem, buddy? Why are you, <laughs> why are you talking about emotion? And, and, you know, painting for me, planner painting is about making a connection between the place, the memory and the person. And that's what's so unique and awesome about plein air painting is it's, it's all the senses, right? It's sight, sound, memory, smell. And you want to walk away from a plein air painting and pack up and say, did I capture, you know, the emotion, the, the feeling of what it felt like to be here today on a fall day in an aspen forest, for example. So that's why I talk about emotion. And, and you know, so if your painting is all light and no dark, it's dead. If your painting is... Um, if it's all warm and no cool, it's dead. So um, a good painting, this is just the flesh of the cantaloupe right here. A good painting is gonna have warm areas and cool areas. And it's going to have, uh, it's gonna have both, you know, and that creates that creates some, some emotion in your painting because it's a visual lighting effect. That's what we're trying to do, you know, really. Go back and watch that Monet video that I did a while ago if you haven't. But the Impressionists were awesome at uh, at just creating that uh, that uh, broken color technique that I talked about. And it's a visual lighting effect. You know, they would do it by layering different colors on top of each other and leaving some show through. And that's called broken color technique. Well, everything about painting is is a visual kind of an optical. It's not an illusion, but it's a, it's a technique, you know. Um, to attract and draw somebody's eye to your painting. And so that's what we're trying to do with contrast. And that's why it, that's why we do it because it creates emotion in the viewer when they see it, you know, so just working on this flesh of the watermelon of the, uh, keep saying watermelon. I want, I want to paint watermelon, the cantaloupe. It's not as brilliant as the orange. So I'm comparing like colors to like colors, oranges to oranges. We got, that's why I did an orange theme 
and I did the complementary color of the flowers of, of violet. So those are complementary colors. And that's why I set up the still life like this. But um, what else can we do here? I mean, you know, the this kind of the rind part is a little more white. It's not quite as vibrant, but like right here, you know, um, I can maybe put a little cad yellow in there, a little yellow ochre, and then just show the shape coming like this. You can see more of it here. And then to show perspective, you see less of it here. So I want to try to show perspective, have proper placement, proper sizing with all my objects. So we can kind of leave that right there. And if you know, toward the end of the painting, if you wanted to get fancy, you could, uh, you could try to show those seeds, you know, with various color techniques that are, that are in the cantaloupe like that. Some are in shadow, some are in light, you know, and I'm just using a palette knife to do that. But that's just those little cantaloupe seeds laying on top there. I like cantaloupe. My wife hates it. Uh, she, I don't get to eat it too often because she won't even really buy it uh, because she hates the smell of it so much. But uh, but I, I kind of like it. And uh, anyway, it's fun to paint too. So uh, that's point number two on contrast. It, it does create emotion. And so you don't want to have a dead painting. Um, you know, you want to you want to use warms and, and, and cools and lights and darks. And then let's just see where else we can go, kind of trying to respect your time here. But uh, we'll have a live Q&A here in a bit and talk about some questions that we're seeing. How about a couple flowers, like right on top there? Let's just go with uh, uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of cobalt blue, some permanent rose. And then there's these, these kind of flowers that are trying to survive. They're the last days of summer here. They're just kind of sitting right there. Some of it's in shadow some of it's in light. So I'll just do the shadow part with a palette knife here. just trying to get the general shape of that, of that flower. And then a little more brilliant color, some permanent rose, titanium white to show, to show where the light, you know, is hitting it like that. You know, you kind of, kind of play with that and do some, some various effects there, but I'm always aware of light and shadow, uh, where the light is coming from, warm, cool, light, shadow. And even on the flower itself, you know, so that's kind of how I think about contrast. And uh, um, again, if you're you're just joining us late, welcome. We are all about plein air landscape oil painting. Hey, Judy, welcome. I see you're in here. I struggle with contrast. I'm glad for this video. Well, thanks, Judy. And I'm glad you're watching. And, you know, it's still a struggle for me, but uh, that's why I, I love plein air oil painting because you never really... <laughs> I don't think you ever really master it, you know, but if you can accomplish some of these techniques we're talking about today, I'm convinced it'll, it'll take your painting to the next level. I wasn't aware of it as a beginner. I just thought, well, the orange is orange and, the, you know, I'll just I'll just paint things by name. But um, but really, it's it's all about when you when you go out and look at a landscape and you choose your composition, keep that in mind. Like when you look at a mountain or you look at the cityscape or the barn. You know, think think to yourself, where is, out there is there an opportunity for contrast? Oh, yeah, look, I see the, the light hitting the barn right there. That's just beautiful. I can show the shadow. And, uh, you know, if you just if you can nail it once or twice in your painting, uh, you're really going to have a beautiful painting. So um, the orange could be a little more refined um, underneath the these fruits, <laughs> these objects. I, I talked about it last week, but you want to do that core dark where the light doesn't hit. And I'll just go like into a little alizarin crimson, for example. And right under here, there's there's a shadow, a core dark where light doesn't get in. And it just lifts it lifts that off, you know, and gives it dimension. Um, there's also um, reflected light and highlights. Let me put a highlight on that orange. You probably can't see it on the camera, but it's a there's a highlight on that orange and it's it's not too brilliant it's just very subtle but when i put it in here it's going to help it's going to help this orange kind of look a lot more realistic and it's right it's right here just a highlight you see it on an apple like a cool light blue color on an apple for example there's one on the grapefruit too so i want to compare the one on the grapefruit to the one on the orange and i just want to see which one the one on the grapefruit looks more blue i'll, I'll try to nail that one right now because i can just see it it's a cool it's a cool blue color hitting right there and that's probably too dark of a value. So I just do a little titanium white, a little cerulean blue, um, maybe a little red, and then just a little more titanium white. And then I just kind of take thick, thick paint 
And this is something you do at the end of your painting to do accents, highlights, darkest dark, lightest lights. And a highlight is what you put on at the very end, but I'll do it now just to show you. So see how that kind of also brings some realism to that grapefruit piece. piece. And I've got my, what do you call that? The navel up there. I've got my shadow. I'm going to leave the grapefruit because I really like it. it. It looks good. I could maybe put a little alizarin crimson under here just to, to get like that. And then to finish that grapefruit, what I would do is, again, thinking about contrast, the light is washing across the table from left to right. So I want to be aware that there's a little, there's a little shadow like right there. See that right there. So shadow, 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 shadow. And I compare each shadow to one another. And it's nice to contrast the light and the shadow. So what I could do next is to create more contrast in this around these objects is I could go into some titanium white and then some CAD light or CAD, CAD yellow medium. And then just really pop the tablecloth a little bit more next to it, like right here, around the shadow like that. And that, Time. and that, and that, and then right there. And see, now we have this kind of visual thing I was talking about, light shadow, light shadow, warm, cool, warm, cool. So um, I'll kind of stop there unless you want me to show something else. We'll get into some questions if you want. But uh, Dan, Judy, anybody else, um, if you have questions or comments, if you're watching in the replay, leave us a comment, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. But I'll finish this up and I'll show you next week, you know, what we have. But that's how I think about contrast in a painting. When you're out in the landscape, you want to do the same thing. You know, what color is it? What value is it? What temperature is it? Can I make it lighter or darker, warmer, or cooler? But how can I place a warm strategically next to a cool? Um, how can I place a light next to a dark in my landscape to make it a little bit more exciting? So um, I know I've got a couple questions written down that people email me about and subscribers ask about. So I can hit on those real quick. Um, but I think we've covered a lot. If, if you could just work on those two things, trying to create contrast with color changes and value and next to each other, you know, don't make your painting all warm and don't make it all cool or else it'll be dead. <laughs> we don't want dead paintings, but, uh, um, I will, uh, here is a question that we get, um, from a lot of people is the wall about the wash. Okay, like should I do a wash or should I not do a wash? And I do a wash every time. Um, sorry, I'm running behind on my caffeine. <laughs> uh, I do a wash because if I just leave the canvas blank, white, um, it it I can't read my lighter colors and values as accurately. And, you know, I mean, I'm not intimidated by a canvas, but when you're a beginner, it can be intimidating to stare at a white blank canvas so it just helps to kind of get some color on there for that aspect in the beginning. And just you can use any color you want. For this painting, I used a I used a violet wash, a darker wash. So if it's a sunny day, try a try a darker wash. If it's a rainy day, try a lighter wash and um, just make it thin with turpenoid. That's how you do that. You, you guys probably already know that already. But when I think about a wash, that's why I do it, you know, because uh, it's not just habit or something to do out of. A lot of times the wash will show through and affect affect uh, how your painting looks, you know. So um, we've talked about contrast. We've talked about a wash. If you guys don't have any other questions, I'll uh, I will let it go at that. And uh, Judy, Dan, thanks for for joining us and everybody who watches on the replay. Appreciate that. And we'll uh, you know if you have not, I'll put this video up here. This one, um, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, Masterclass Vibrant Oil Painting Colors: Twelve Tips. There's a lot, a lot of really solid information. That's like a little mini master course, that video uh, that I painted up in the mountains. Watch that one. So I'll put it up here. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, if planar painting is your thing, you know, leave us a comment, subscribe. And thanks for watching. So uh, God bless you guys. And we'll see you next Friday on the patio for more tips and techniques. And I'll see you up in the mountains too. God bless. You take care.